Hello, Republicans. Hello. I'm real glad to be able to talk to you folks today about the coming election. I'm sure we all agree on our candidate. Couldn't have a better one. But now we've got to make sure that he gets elected. Now, you know, elections are funny things. You look at the total vote, it doesn't mean much. But when you take all of the individual people that it takes to make up that vote, that comes home to you. It's like that bay out there, a pretty big body of water. But it's just a lot of drops put together. And that's what an election is. So besides voting ourselves, if each one of us will see to it that the whole Republican vote gets to the polls, we can win. On the last several elections, we Republicans have made a pretty good showing by doing just that. Now, two years ago, we made a successful film explaining our time-proven method for getting out the vote. And the man who was one of our hardest precinct workers We'll show you how the Republican Victory Squad, as we call it, works. He graduated from precinct work. He is now our candidate for governor, my good friend, Ronald Reagan. Now, this is a Victory Squad headquarters, one of many that are in operation throughout the county. It doesn't look like much at the moment. What it needs is people, you and me. The people who volunteer for the Victory Squad go out on election day and ask each and every registered Republican to go to the polls and vote. Months before the election, other volunteers prepare special lists of every single registered Republican in the county so that the work of the Victory Squad can go off without a hitch. The most modern equipment and skilled personnel are used. All the really hard, tedious work is done ahead of time so that you can go out to the precincts, meet the people, Republicans who think and believe as you do, and get them down to vote, down to the polls where every ballot counts. In 1960, Nixon lost to Kennedy by 118,000 votes in the entire country. And there were 15 million registered Republicans who stayed home from the polls that day. The Democrats did it. They got their people out and to the polls. Well, let's take a leaf from their book. This person-to-person -person contact is what counts in elections. It's been proved since the ballot box was invented. It made the difference in the 1960 presidential election. It's still true today. With all the TV campaigning, the mass meetings, the newspaper advertising, the electioneering gimmicks, there is no substitute for down-to-earth, house-to-house, person-to-person contact. Let's see how the Victory Squad works. Let's meet one of the volunteers. I'm John Bennett. I've got a wife and two children, a job I like, and frankly, not much time for anything else. I've always considered myself a good Republican, but I've never really been able to do much about it, except vote, write a letter to my congressman once in a while, make a contribution, and gripe about the way things are going. I'm pretty good at that. I get hot under the collar just thinking about the way the government's spending my money about all the things I know the Republicans could do better. So I decided that I don't have the right to complain unless I really try to do something about it. John called Republican headquarters and learned that there was an organization set up for people just like him. People who want to contribute but don't have much time. The Victory Squad. All he had to do was give six hours of time. Six hours on election day. That's not much for the big reward. Volunteers report on election day at 2 o'clock in the afternoon and join with the regular precinct workers who've been working all year long. This gives them six hours before the polls close to find Republicans who haven't voted. Remember, this year the polls close at 8 o'clock. Well, this is it. Same place you saw at the beginning, but with that extra added important ingredient. People. Here's John, feeling a bit lost at first. Now, that's Mr. Hewitt. He's a high school principal playing hooky for the afternoon. This nice woman, Mrs. Duffy. And this is Silas Johnson. He owns an oil company. They're all on the victory squad. This is the assigner. He makes up the teams who'll work with one another. Ah, lucky man. Your teammate is Mary Myers.
Each teen gets to choose which precinct they'd like to work in. Mary has chosen a part of the city she doesn't know well. That's a good idea. That's one of the enjoyable aspects of this job. You get to meet new people in neighborhoods you've never stopped to look at before. These are the victory kits, the basis for the entire operation and the result of all the automation and preparation you saw before. The names of all the Republicans in a precinct are listed in numerical order of their street addresses so that a volunteer doesn't search in the precinct for each particular voter by name, but finds him by house number. Now for the briefing. Our instructor explains the job to the teams. For the benefit of shy members, he reminds them that the victory squad isn't out to do any electioneering. They don't have to persuade anyone how to vote. They're only calling on people who already agree with their political philosophy, Republicans. Republicans who haven't voted yet. The dispatcher makes sure that everyone knows how to get where he's going and by the quickest route. They're off. First stop, the polling place in the precinct where they'll work. Now you've all seen the big list that hangs outside the polling places. The names of all those citizens who have already voted are crossed off every hour by the election officials. It's as simple as that for John and Mary to find out which Republicans haven't voted. The first hurdle is the hardest. How easy is that? This lady's waiting for her husband to take her when he comes home from work. Mary makes a note that she may have to return later to check. John has hit pay dirt on his first try. Here's a young mother who can't get a babysitter for her children. Just the sort of problem the Victory Squad is designed for. John will call headquarters and have a volunteer babysitter sent out within an hour. Now that's a vote the Republicans wouldn't have if it hadn't been for John. How we doing, Ed? I guess you know we can always use more help. I just gave Jim Davis and his wife a big Republican precinct. See you for coffee when the polls close, Jim. Jim's an old hand. He got two extra votes in his precinct the last time. When you stop to realize the large number of precincts in our county, well, you can see that two extra votes in each precinct could win an election. Here's a man who's telephoned from Republican headquarters. But just a phone call wasn't enough. He figures, what's one vote, more or less? Who'll know the difference? Besides, he's got a lot to do. But there's something about meeting this man face to face that makes an apathetic voter get out and down to the polls. There were 15 million voters in the United States like him in the last election. People who, because of inconvenience or indifference, did not vote. When no one answers the bell, they leave doorknob hangers as reminders to vote. It's getting to be a race against the clock. With only a half an hour until the polls close, John meets a Republican who has no way of getting to the polls. He and Mary do the only thing they can, take him. This could be a deciding vote. Well, the polls are closed, but six hours really flew by. We'll know the results soon. There are John and Mary. They have every right to be pleased with themselves. They got three extra Republican votes in one precinct. Do you know by how little the Democrats won the plurality in 1960? By less than one vote, a precinct. That's what the Victory Squad is designed to do. Get out that one or two extra votes that makes the difference. All we need for a Republican victory is a small change, not a large one. Now I'd like to leave you with these words of Winston Churchill. The destiny of mankind is not decided by material computation. When great causes are on the move in the world, we learn that we're spirits, not animals, and that something is going on in space and time and beyond space and time, which, whether we like it or not, spells duty. Well, there you have it. Now it's up to us. If you'll sign up for the Victory Squad on one of these cards, you'll be contacted for what I hope is an exciting and rewarding job. So put your name down now and help make our candidate the next governor of California.
See you on election day. <laughs>